This lecture is meant to be about how you create something, how you work. This is how I work. This is how I start off. I make a montage of the type. I pile it up on the press before I get anywhere near the ink and the paper. This is the basic raw material, 600 year old technology. And my thesis is, how do you make something new out of something old? And I've been trying to do that for the last 23 years. This shows some of the collection of type I've got. There's miles and miles of it. You need lots of stuff because sometimes you just want one letter which will fit into something else. And you've got, you can only use what you've got. I can't make it up. I can't make a photocopy and just change it slightly by a few millimeters. It's got to be the original thing. So therefore I have lots of I've just, we've probably got the biggest collection of wood type and metal type in Europe, I should think. And sometimes I just need one single thing. This is a picture of my late wife Celia Stothard, who died um, uh, 14 months ago, working in our workshop in Kennington. So the next stage after the, after the wood pile-up is proofing it up and onto tissue paper or glassine and making a paper montage. And that's what we're doing there. Inking up, inking up, laying the paper on, printing, printing. That's um, using the symmetry of the, uh, the letters. And what, what Celia called ice cream colours. Because printers never used to use colour. They used black. And now and again they use red. But that was it. You weren't allowed to use anything else. And these are our tags. Celia and Alan. Celia Stothard, Alan Kitching, Typography Workshop. This is part of the same series. All the type came from a great collection of theatrical type and borders. This is our other workshop in Southwark. There's always meant to be an idea behind it. I'm not just printing type for the sake of it. This was part of a theatrical series that Celia and I did. And it was, it was, the idea was based upon um, a mirror in a theatre, in a dressing room. So you had the, flat, you had the bulbs around the, around the mirror and the star was you looking at yourself. A lot of people didn't get it, I don't think, but never mind. This is uh, more type. I did this for John McConnell for a, a charity. Um, this is using the material, making the, the actual material visible, which you don't normally see. The, the, all the type furniture and the blocks and stuff, which hold everything together. This is where I mean that you need just a certain size letter to fill a space. And that's why I have to plunder the collection, just to find you know, the right sort of width of H to fit, fit between the P and the H and to fit in with the O. The grid was a cover for um, a CD cover, for something called the grid. The typography was a cover for the magazine opening.
This is uh, Dante's Inferno. No, so. uh, this is for the rainforest. Portuguese means the word in the forest, the word running through the trees. This is for a magazine on kind of concrete poetry, visible poet, vis visible poetry, I think it was called. And again, using the technology that you can ink something up and then you can make another impression of it. So this is how it was done. I inked, this, I inked up the page on the left and I made the impression from just pressing it down onto the wet ink to, to get the kiss impression. And that was in a book. This is for, um, I did this for an exhibition about Samuel, uh, Samuel Beckett. It's a quotation from Beckett. And if you know anything about Beckett's plays, they're very dark and very, you know, moody kind of grim things. And uh, I wanted to try and convey that feeling of uh, drama, if you like. All these pieces are done in limited editions. Printing was always meant to be the media that reproduced the, the text or the image over and over again. I don't agree with that. It is now used for one image. I get one image of it. Maybe two, maybe three. I don't, I don't go very far more than 40 of an edition. So I'm using the way, I'm using, I think I'm trying to use it in a new kind of way. All the, all the things outside in the monotype exhibition, it was all made for mass, mass reproduction. And I'm slightly against it. Fleet Street. This was made for a magazine, you know, high speed uh, presses. This is meant to indicate um, the, the, the sheet going through a, 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 a rotary press like a million miles an hour, you know, and you get a blurred image. And um, so I'm using the process colours there to suggest a kind of uh, that magazine process. And then uh, these were, uh, hang on a bit, a book of it. Um, I did these for somebody, I can't remember what it was now. Um, most of these were commissions for people. This was for this um, uh, America Online thing, you know, they, they commissioned like a million people to, do a, to use their name and do a thing. And um, so they, uh, I did the basics, and then they took the, the type out of it. Uh, so I do a lot of commission work, as well as um, very um, personal, um, things which uh, I do editions of. Celia and I did this, this is our heroes. It's called Musical Types. And everybody in there who we loved Dietrich, Hendrix, Bob, George Mellon, Bing Crosby. Edith Piaf, Ella Fitzgerald, Eartha Kitt, and so on. This took a long time to do because it was just, we kept changing names, adding th names. And the whole concept of it is that the borders um, indicate as if it was a kind of torn off poster of, of a hoarding. So you only got one name. You didn't say Bob Dylan, you just said Dylan. So the border on Dylan is on the right hand side. But she lost the word Bob. Um, and the say, and um, let's sort of think, Hendrix, you just got it on the side, you lose the word Jimmy. Um, on the Gracie Fields one, it's on the left hand side because you lose the word Fields, which she was known by, she was known by, a name. they were known by these names, Piaf, Gracie, Bing, and so on. So that was the logic behind it. So I'm not just making pretty patterns, there's a logic of, intent behind the whole thing. This was a commission by um, Heidelberg in Germany. They wanted to make a thing about London printing as a, London as a printing, printing city. 
And these are all the places that printing took place, publishers, and how they moved around the city. This is one of the first maps I did, actually. This was 1995. Uh, 90, and the next map is quite recent. I, did a lot of the, I started doing all these maps. And this is, this is um, I did this last, uh, last year, I think. It was, because um, I'm a big fan of Dr. Johnston, he of the dictionary. And all the text at the top is everything he said about London, which was recorded by his friend, James Boswell. And the map underneath is where he lived which was around Fleet Street and um, not far from here, actually, you know, Covent Garden, Auburn. So I was trying to combine this to... Um, this was... The, this was I did this last year, it was a kind of sour... Um, our next old neighbour, Barra from Kennington, which is... Um, Places which we used to visit and eat at, and pubs we liked, and the gallery which I show in is down here on the bottom. Advanced graphics on Long Lane and Tabard Street, and um, and my next slide is the book cover. Again, back to the idea that you're showing the whole process of the thing. It's the it's the chase locked up with, um, and, the, and the book was wrapped, and the cover, this was the cover, and it was wrapped around the book. I've got some of these books with me, if you like, to look at it later. And this was how she looked. And she was a singer as well, as a, as a very good designer. And these are some pages from the book. This was when she was with Glyn Boyd Hart and Ian Beck in the, in the 70s. And um, this is when I met her at the Chelsea Arts Club. And we did this poster for one of the shows. And she sang French a chanson. She spoke French like a native. She was a very good designer. She'd signed this, po this poster. And when I met her at the club, I saw this poster. And I said, I didn't know she'd done it. And I said to her, didn't Pentagram do that logo? She said, no, I did. And um, I've got four minutes left, so that's it.